Okay, so when it comes to money and personal finance, there is no more important skill than mathematics. And uh, what I have for you here is a nice basic math problem. Nothing too uh, complex, but I think a lot of people will be a little bit confused here on how to solve this problem. But let me go ahead and read it to you. It is a stock falls in price from $100 to $50. What is the percent of growth needed for that stock to get to $150? Okay, so feel free to use a calculator. And if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I will walk through the solution here step by step. And uh, just one other quick comment here. A lot of people say, why do I have to learn math, you know, algebra, geometry? It's really not, I don't really use this in real life. Well, I could tell you right now, uh, percent is probably the number one most practical math skill that everyone needs to understand. So if you understand percent pretty decently, you should be able to figure this problem out. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, feel free to use your calculator, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer and see if you, in fact you did this right. All right, so the correct answer is 200%. And just to kind of refresh our memory here, the question is, we have this stock, right? It went down in price from $100 to $50. So from $50 to $150, from uh, a stock to go from $50 to $150, the percent of growth is 200%. There's a 200% of increase. So if you figure this out, that is fantastic. We must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of percent of increase and decrease problems. So that's what we're dealing with here. This is what we call a percent of increase. It's not, it's just not a regular percent problem. It is what we call a percent of increase problem. Okay, so it's a little bit of a twist on percent type problems. And it's, uh, you know, obvious, hopefully, that you have to understand percent in order to uh, do a problem like this. But this is not that difficult. And uh, if you are struggling with percent, uh, let me give you uh, some quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos about percent on my uh, YouTube channel, so please take advantage of those. And if you want to really kind of learn basic math to include percent, I have a great little mini course called my Math Foundations course. You'll find that in the description, uh, the link to that course in the description as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. And first, we want to recognize that this is a math word problem, right? So Anytime you have a uh, problem, in not only just in mathematics, but just in, you know, in anything, you just don't want to read the problem one time and be like, okay, I understand the problem. You know, that's never a good strategy. So for me, I always like to suggest the rule of three. Read the problem three times. Really, really make sure you understand what's going on and you understand the precise nature of the question, right? So we have this stock. Uh, it falls in price. It goes from here to here, but we want to see... What is the percent of increase needed to go from this price to this price? All right, so once you have a good sense of the problem, what you want to do is model the problem, okay? And there's all kinds of different creative ways uh, to come up with a model. But uh, let me go ahead and show you what I did. I like to kind of visualize what's going on because when you see something, okay, there's that old adage, a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. And indeed it is. This is why we use graphs a lot in mathematics or in, you know, interpreting data. When you see, uh, you know, kind of the visual representation of the problem, it's much easier to kind of uh, come up with ideas on in terms of the solution, right? So we have this stock. Uh, of course, we know um, we have two um, axes here. One is money, one is time. You don't have, we don't have to get all technical about this, but this is like the stock price. So at one time, right, so early on, this stock price was at $100. But let's suppose, you know, you're like, well, I got to get to $150 before I sell my stock. That's my goal. Well, 
uh, obviously the stock dropped from $100 to $50, okay? Now, uh, the question uh, in, uh, with the question that's being asked here has nothing to do with this information, okay? This is a typical type of math trick, okay? This is what we call extraneous information, right? It doesn't even make a difference if this, this stock could have been at $1,000 and dropped to $50 because this uh, part of the story, let's just kind of separate the two, this is the past, okay? It has nothing to do with what we're interested in. What we're interested in is what's going on right now, right? Only this point, from 50 to $150, uh, what is the percent of growth for this stock? Okay, so clearly the stock is at $50 per share. And we want to see, okay, from $50 per sh uh, share, what is the percent of uh, increase needed to get to $150? So that, this is kind of a typical type of, um, you know, math textbook, math exam uh, a question, a tactic, if you will, is sometimes um, extra information be thrown in uh, to kind of, you know, uh, overly complicate things. But really the main idea um, with math, uh, math teachers, mathematics, and, uh, you know, math education, if you will, they put this uh, information in because they want to uh, have you develop the discipline to analyze, you know, all the information in the problem because you won't necessarily need all that information. You have to get information that you need specifically to answer the question. And this is the same thing in uh, real life, okay? You can collect a bunch of information, but, you know, is uh, oftentimes information that you're collecting about a particular problem is irrelevant, okay? But, you know, we have to be careful because we can collect a lot of information and we can just kind of get overloaded with a bunch of information that is not necessary, okay? So that's why having a model, okay, is, um, you know, really, really helpful. All right, so this is uh, the problem is we, uh, we want to know the percent of increase to go from $50 to $150. All right, so now let's go ahead and see what we need to do here. And uh, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, this is what we call a percent of change type of problem. And there's basically two types of percent of change, okay? And this is what we call percent of increase and percent of decrease. And they pretty much work the same. There's a few different... Um, formulas for this, but I kind of like to uh, represent it in, you know, the most basic common sense type of uh, uh, way we can, right? So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to figure this problem out. Okay, so what we have here is the old price, okay, or the starting point price or the original price. That's $50, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between the new price and the old price, okay? So, we're making a comparison here, and the big uh, part of this uh, percent of change that confuses people is that we're comparing this change, okay, from 50 to 150 to the original price. If we want to find the percent of increase, it's always to the original or the old or the starting point price. So we're going to find the difference between the uh, the two prices, right? So we're, uh, we want to know the percent of increase. Uh, for the stock to go from 50 to 150, but we're comparing it to the original um, starting uh, price, which of course is 50. So it's 50 minus 50 over 50. Okay, now this is the setup to do a percent of change problem, but obviously we're going to have to do this math here and express it as a percent, and we're going to do that next. But first, I would hope that next you would say, you know what? This guy's not too bad. Yeah, I think I will subscribe to his channel. Uh, hopefully that is what you're going to do. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification button. This really helps me, which in turn helps my uh, uh, classroom, if you will, right? So my objective is to grow my channel, grow my reach, uh, to reach as many people who are interested in math, who just want to relearn math or learn math for the first time, and who really, really need a, a lot of help, okay? People... Uh, there's just too many people out there that struggle in math that can be uh, great in math, but their confidence is down because they're not getting the instruction and support they need. So by you subscribing, it does really help me reach these folks. Thank you so much. As a matter of fact, this is the way I look right now as you hit that subscribe button. Now back to the problem. All right, so here is the setup. Again, this is a percent of change. Uh, type of problem, and uh, we have percent of increase, percent of decrease. This would be a percent of increase. 
Okay, so here we're going to take the difference of the changes of the price, right? So, and we're going to compare it to the starting point, which of course is 50. So 50 minus, uh, 150, excuse me, minus 50 is 100. 100 uh, divided by 50 is 2. Now, at this point, you say, well, it's 2, you know, is, where's the percent? Well, what we need to do, anytime you um, work in, um, have a fraction, if you will, any fraction, what you're going to do to change that fraction, uh, typically what we want to do is change a fraction to a decimal. It's not necessary, but uh, here, for example, 1 fourth, we can change the decimal 0.25, which is 25%. Uh, so to go from a fraction or a decimal to a percent, you have to multiply by 100. So 2 times 100 is 200% of increase, okay? And this, you know, hopefully kind of makes sense, right? So if we're at 50 right here, and we want to get to 150, well, we have to add another $50 and another $50 to get to 150. Well, if we're going to add another $50 to you know, our, our price, if we're going, this is basically doubling, right? So this is 100%, and then we get to double again, another 100%. That's 200% growth. So hopefully this makes sense to you, but let's just be super clear on changing uh, fractions and decimals to percent. So uh, here is another example. So let's suppose uh, we had uh, 10 over 50. We did some sort of percent problem. We ended up with this. Now you could choose to multiply by 100 because uh, that's how you go from a fraction to a decimal. But if you have your calculator handy, typically it's just pretty easy just to turn this into a percent. Take 10 divided by 50, you get 0.2. And then you just go ahead and multiply by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the right. So this is 0.2 or 0.20. When you multiply by 100, what happens, the decimal point moves over two places to the right. So this, for example, uh, 10 over 50 or 0.2 is 20%. Okay, so again, you know, I can't stress the importance uh, to learning as much as you can about basic mathematics. Of course, you know, I'm going to encourage you to keep uh, learning about algebra, geometry, just continue to go. But the more math you know, the better off you're going to be in so many areas of your life. Okay, and when it comes to practical math, you absolutely want to know percent. And percent problems, by the way, um, can be pretty interesting. You can have percent of increase, percent of decrease. There's all different types of creative percent problems. It's not just basic percent, like find 7% of 30. That's a pretty basic problem that most of you hopefully can do. So anyways, again, you know, when it comes to, you know, personal finance, money and whatnot, hey, the more math you know, the better off you'll be. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.